Just an MSNBC political analyst, also joining us, Jason Johnson, politics editor at theroot.com, an MSNBC contributor. Uh, and Steve Schmidt, uh, there are two comparisons being made here uh, on Ossoff's vote. His, his vote is being compared to Hillary Clinton's vote, which is a choice for president, not a House member. And the vote is being compared to the last congressional race in that district. Which one of those comparisons is the one that Republicans should be looking at tonight to contemplate their strength in the congressional election in 2018? Look, Lawrence, uh, if you're a House campaign strategist, I think you're sitting there tonight going, thank God uh, we pulled it out. Just because the seawall held doesn't mean the storm wasn't fierce and the waves were at large. Uh, this is an overwhelmingly Republican district. Mitt Romney getting 66 percent of the vote. Donald Trump coming down to 49 percent. Tom Price getting elected somewhere between 68 percent to 61 percent in his elections. So this is an ominous win for Republicans. When you look at the $23 million raised by grassroots donors, where you see that energy, uh, the Democrats were tapping on the glass in this overwhelmingly Republican district. And when you look at how the Democrats get into the majority, you have a 24-seat majority, 23 seats that Secretary Clinton carried that are represented by a Republican. And I think what you're seeing is the new battleground of American politics are these suburbs where affluent, white, college-educated Republican voters who are uncomfortable with Donald Trump I think are likely to be swing voters in 18 in 2020. As the Republican Party's gotten more red, it's become more rural. As the Democratic Party's become more blue, it's become more urban. And that's left the suburbs as a battlefield. And I think we saw one of the early battles of it uh, playing out in this race, which was surprisingly close. Jason Johnson, if you're a Republican in the House of Representatives and you won your seat with less than 20 percent of the vo vote, what do you feel like tonight? Uh, you're, you're not all that encouraged. I mean, you have to look at Karen Handel and, and think like they basically spent $23 million. They pretty much spent like Tom Brady's salary to keep a seat that had been in Republican hands for 20 years. Um, that's not something that you want to have to think about if you're a Republican next year heading into 2018, uh, knowing that the public is going to be more energized, more excited, and possibly unhappy about the health care bill. Look, at the end of the day, and, and I agree with Steve in this regard, you know, this was a plus 9% registration district for the Republicans. They should have won this. The fact that it was even close and the fact that this much money had to be spent, I don't think any Republican is comfortable right now because most can't raise $23 million to stop someone who's challenging. And uh, Steve Schmidt, we saw in South Carolina a surprisingly close race tonight in that special election that people did not have their eye on expecting it to be that close. If you go back to 1993, Lawrence, uh, when Bill Clinton was pretty unpopular in that first term, you had two special elections that dropped into the Republican column out along the Mississippi River, the Kentucky one, the Kentucky two districts. And that showed us that something was brewing for 1994. I think when you look right now, you consider the fact that the incumbent president's party has only picked up seats in that first midterm three times in the last 118 years. You look at the dispersion of those congressional districts that Hillary Clinton carried, represented by a Republican. You consider the president's approval numbers in the mid-30s, uh, the health care bill, uh, the lack of an ability by this Republican leadership to move an agenda forward. Uh, there are a lot of ominous wins out there if you're a competitive member of Congress. And remember, most members of Congress are as likely to lose their seat as a member of the old Soviet Politburo. But for that special category that are in competitive races, uh, they probably have a nauseous feeling tonight watching this Georgia 6 race. Uh, Jason Johnson, what's going to happen in this Georgia 6 district next year? In the, in the uh, 2018 election, will John Ossoff try to jump back in uh, and try to rerun this race? No one's going to admit that now, uh, Lawrence, but, but that's what's going to happen. Look, they're just going to keep focusing on Karen Handel. This is an important thing, and I, and I think this is key. It's the difference between sort of being on the outside and really being here on the ground and talking to some of the folks who are canvassing. There wasn't actually a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for either Karen Handel or John Ossoff. 
This was really a referendum on Trump in a district that more or less was still going to vote for him. But within the year, as Karen Handel gets saddled with some of the same policy issues that have made Trump unpopular, I think she's going to be a number one target for John Ossoff next year. He's not falling off the map. People are going to stay enthusiastic. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if we get a rematch uh, next year, and the result may turn out to be different. And Steve Schmidt, in the 2018 congressional elections, the Republicans in Congress are either going to be de defending uh, a, a bill that they voted for on health care that has been signed into law, or they're going to be defending, to some constituents, their failure to get a bill on health care signed into law. Yeah, ultimately, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Nobody has any idea, of course, what's in it, what it costs, how many people will lose their insurance, its impact. Uh, whether you think Obamacare is a good idea or a bad idea, should it be repealed or not, you know, certainly the method that they're following, no public hearings, no public vetting of it, no ability for people to be affected by it to, to weigh in, it's not going to have a it's not going to have a good outcome. And already the House bill has a 17 percent approval level out across the out across the country. When you look at the agenda and the degree to which it's stuck, uh, and you look at how energized Democrats are at some of these districts, you know, Republicans you are going to have their work cut out for them in 2018. They're heading into a big headwind, and they're going to have a difficult problem answering a pretty simple question, which is, you know, the first check we get at the polls of, how's Donald Trump doing? What are they going to say when people ask the question, do you think he's doing a good job as president? That's tough for Republican candidates in these marginal districts to answer in a way that doesn't make them look like fools or turn off Trump supporters. So they have some difficult hours ahead, I suspect, as we start to move into this 18 cycle. Let's take a look at uh, what Paul Ryan is going to be facing. Uh, this is Randy Bryce, who's already announced that he, he wants to run as a Democrat against Paul Ryan. Speaker's seat is supposed to be a safe seat. But let's take a look at how Randy Bryce wants to run against Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan, come up and say a few words. Congratulations on a job well done. This is repealing and replacing Obamacare. Everybody doesn't get what they want. It's a very painful condition. It's like hot knives going through, and you can't talk, you can't swallow. It's terrible. I'm gonna cry. I'm on 20 drugs, and if I don't take the one that costs them thousands of dollars, I don't know what would happen. I'm the best person to represent this district because I'm a working person. If somebody falls behind, we're so much stronger if we carry them with us. That's the way I was raised. You look out for each other. I think it's time, let's, let's trade places. Paul Ryan, you can come work the iron, and I'll go to D.C. Jason Johnson, it looks like uh, every Republican might just have uh, a, a serious Democratic challenger. Yeah, yeah, this is this is akin to when Republicans were chasing after Daschle a couple of years ago. You don't usually see serious challengers against party leadership, but but this is the thing, Lawrence, and this is a, a big political science issue that I think, again, is, is a sort of the big question that Republicans have to look at. The enthusiasm on the side of Democrats is attracting better candidates, mm -hmm. and better candidates are forcing people to have to defend a flank that they couldn't have to do before. And so I, I think we're already going to see, I, I bet you later on this summer, you're going to see more and more Republicans to Decide, you know what, I may retire. I don't want to have to spend the next 18 months raising a million and a half dollars to protect myself. And when you see something like this happening in Paul Ryan's own backyard, it's, a, it's really a shot across the bow for any Republican out there to defend this administration, which is sinking faster than any poll numbers people can imagine. Steve Schmidt and Jason Johnson, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Lawrence. Thank you,